Hi everyone, this is Jessica Fern Cooley, and upon request, I'm giving a recording of my keynote that I just gave at the Loving More Philadelphia Conference in February 2019. I just want to give a thank you first to Robin Trask for asking me to be one of the keynotes this year, and so here's an adapted version of the talk that I gave. So I know that many of you who are listening are listening because you are really out-of-the-box thinkers, or I should probably say out-of-the-box lovers, where you want the freedom to love and conduct your relationships or to express your sexuality based on what feels most true to you instead of what society says we're supposed to do. And I also know that there are those of you who are listening um, and were at this previous conference because at some point you awoke to the truth that love is infinite, that love is not a limited resource that can get stuffed into a box, a box with certain specifications about what it's supposed to look like and who you're supposed to have it with and the escalator it's supposed to ride. So I know that many of us are really wanting to call into question these limited notions of love and sexuality and to really challenge the hetero mononormative box. And it's amazing. But there's another type of box that I still see love getting stuffed into, even in this kind of community. And I see love getting stifled through this notion that we first have to love ourselves before we can ever really love someone else. So I'm sure you've heard of this um, by now. It's sort of an increasingly popular idea that you first need to love yourself before you can ever actually truly fully love anybody else. And now I do think there is definitely some merit to this idea, especially in how it's acknowledging the importance and the need for self-love, which is often overlooked in this culture. But I do take issue with this idea for three reasons. So the first is that this is not actually how love works. So from a developmental perspective, as children, we do not come into this world knowing how to do self-love, and then we grow up to love others. <laughs> self-love isn't something that comes to us first but rather it is through the experience of being loved and being attuned to that we learn then how to self-regulate our own emotions. It's through the experience of being held and being soothed by another that we then learn how to self-soothe. So it's only first through receiving love that we are then able to love others, and it's only first through receiving love that we learn and internalize a sense of I am worthy and I am valuable. And that's the foundation of self-love. So if in childhood we didn't get this kind of love or modeling, which many of us didn't, it's not just later a switch that we can turn on in sort of the isolation of being an independent adult and voila, there's some self-love. But instead, it's something we need to heal and something we need to receive and experience in the context of adult, loving, interdependent relationships. And if you check out my talk on secure attachment, which is online, you, I go more into the facets of that. The second reason I don't love this notion that we need to first love ourselves before we can love another is because, well, how many of you, me included, heard this idea and you agree? I'm not really doing the best job at self-care. I'm not prioritizing self-love. I And this isn't sustainable for me anymore. But then, according to the logic of this idea, if you agree that you have been struggling with self-love, then does that then mean that you've never really fully loved anyone before because you weren't loving yourself first? And so I don't buy it. Because how many of us who have struggled with self-love are also people who at some point have completely given our blood, our sweat, our tears, our devotion to children, to a dying loved one, to a relationship, to a cause, to a pet. So how dare we try to minimize or trivialize or even erase these genuine acts of love and say, well, that wasn't real because you weren't loving yourself first.
And finally, I take issue with this idea of needing to love yourself before you can love another because it puts love into a binary. It puts love into an equation, a formula. If this, then that, which is either or thinking. And so either or thinking not only creates separateness, but in this case it also creates this competitiveness where it becomes my needs versus your needs, my love for myself versus my love for you. And now either or thinking, it slices life into categories, simplistic categories, which can be neutral. It can be purely just an attempt to understand. But often the impact of either or thinking is divisiveness and forms of control where you're either male or you're female, you're gay or you're straight, you're monogamous or you're polyamorous, you're a U.S. citizen or you're an alien, you're on this side of the wall or you're on that side of the wall. You're either right or you're wrong. And it's these types of binaries that have justified oppression and waged wars. But as many of us know, the world isn't either or, one or the other, black or white. The human experience is not a binary, but instead the human experience, it is rich, it is complex, it is nuanced, and it plays out and unfolds over multi-dimensional spectrums. And when we are connected to the larger field of infinite love, any potential violence from a binary loses its power because love transcends the binary. Love makes no distinctions between, well, here's some love for me over here at four today, and then there's some love for you later on. Love does not function through either or thinking. And when we are connected to the source of awake, flowing love, it just emanates, and it just offers itself to whomever and whatever is needed. No distinction. And when we are connected to the source of awake, flowing love, division dissolves. And in its place, the paradox of both and arises. So what do I mean by both and? So in the same way that light can be both a wave and a particle, it's not either a wave or a particle, it's simultaneously both a wave and a particle. Love is both an intense feeling that we have and it is a way of being that is embodied. Love is both a choice that we can make, and it is something that we can fall completely face first into as if we had no choice at all. Love is both an infinite source that cannot be depleted, and it is also something that can start really small, and it can be cultivated and grown with practice. So the next time you hear the advice and someone says to you, you need to love yourself before you can love another, still listen to this advice, still take it as valid advice, but not from the place of limited possibility that the either or thinking creates, where love is a finite resource that you are deficient in. But take this advice from the both end perspective, where love is not a binary. Love is a paradox it is infinite, it is simultaneously for both you and the other, because love is both and.